Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again in today's video. My ridiculous local Karen pretended to be a police officer in order to police the neighborhood. She claimed that she literally owns the sidewalk so she could control who can park where and when. She even ended up putting up fake signs to get people towed. Things did not end well when the police arrived. Here is what happened. The title story goes like this. In the last town I used to live in, there was a Karen that was an absolute psycho. She had decided at one point that she was the law of the neighborhood and in control of everything. She drove around in what was essentially a golf cart to patrol the neighborhood. I'll be the first to admit that nobody calling her out much on this or trying to stop her in the beginning was a huge mistake. In hindsight, somebody stopping her before she really got started could have saved many people a ton of hassle. One reason that we didn't though was because she tried to come off like she was an actual police officer. It sounds stupid looking back, but she had the word police on her little golf cart and would flash a badge at people when they would try and argue things against her. Nobody had a thought to check if it was real or if she had any authority to do things. And well, it started out small with her telling people they couldn't do things as small as having their sprinklers going at an inappropriate time or trash cans being too close to a tree. Obviously, her made-up rules were the tip-off for me that she was crazy and in no way actual police. The biggest thing with Karen though was the sidewalk and people parking on the streets. Let me start with the sidewalk and how she decided that she owns it. There were a lot of kids in the neighborhood and they would go out with chalk and draw all over the sidewalks. Granted, yes, the property owners did not own the sidewalk in front of their house. It was city property though, so obviously Karen did not own it either. They were not destroying or doing any damage to it. Chalk comes off the minute that it rains, which happened a lot where I live. Also, to stop that one person in the comments, they were not drawing anything lewd or offensive either for any Karen to complain about. They were honestly just young kids drawing things like rainbows and cats and unidentifiable squiggles. They would also move when somebody was using the sidewalk to walk so they weren't blocking people or anything dumb. Still though, Karen would constantly try and chase the kids away from the sidewalk, telling them that they were breaking the law and could not draw on it. Must have made her feel really big, yelling and scaring kids. Even people using the sidewalk for things like biking or walking their baby in a stroller, she had issues with. She claimed that they needed her permission to use the sidewalk since she was the officer of the neighborhood. However, not a single person listened to her and I don't know if she handed out fake tickets, but I doubt anybody paid them if she did. Or they would have tried to pay them to town hall where they would have been told it was not a legit ticket. Anyway, she did not stop at just the sidewalk though, like your average insane Karen. No, she decided that the street was also hers and that nobody could park there claiming that it got in the way of her patrolling and doing so would be interfering with a cop. She would constantly tell people to move their cars and leave passive-aggressive notes on the windshields. Then she decided to step things up to an entirely new level, which is what ended up with me getting into it with her and things coming to a boil. I think it came down to her wanting spots open all over so that she would not need to walk at any point when she wants to park her car. Basically, she wanted every single parking spot available for her only at all times and it's the only semi-logical explanation I could think of. So what she did was she decided to put up a bunch of no parking signs all over the block during the night when we were sleeping. Most people were not parked on the street, but I was lazy the day before and parked in front because it's actually easier to get groceries inside that way. The driveway has a weird curve and results in a longer walk that is also through what was mud that day. And then I never bothered moving the car in for the night. Of course that meant this new sign was right where I parked and then Karen called a towing company the next morning. Since the sign looked legit, my car ended up getting towed illegally and that was my cue to start a war against Karen. Starting of course with finding her driving around and yelling at her for having my car towed when we both know parking is legal on that street. She tried to shove her fake power in my face and present me with her police badge. She likes to flash it quickly but I was fast and ended up grabbing it. I looked it over to see just how bad of a fake it was before dropping a piece of information on her. I told her that my father was a cop and I know exactly what a real police badge looks like. She was even dumb enough to put her real name on it. So I snapped some pictures of that and her golf cart before getting a friend to drive me to the police station. I told him about her illegally towing my car and that she was going around claiming to be police. 
I showed them the fake badge and asked them if she was on the force and had authority to control the sidewalks and streets. The cops were in shock that somebody would be dumb enough to do that and told me they were gonna investigate it right away. Along with helping me talk to the tow company since they work for the town and telling them that the tow was illegal so I could get my car back without paying anything. The next day I saw a bunch of police lights outside and took a peek out the window to see what was happening. Real officers had caught her in her little golf cart and arrested her. I could only wish that I heard whatever they were saying to her and the answers she was coming up with. I mean, she was caught driving something that said police on it without being actual police, so they didn't need much more evidence than that. I know Karen had a huge ego though and would probably say things that would incriminate her. I could picture her saying that she declared herself the police because their neighborhood was going to hell and needed somebody to save it or something like that. Basically anything that would paint her as a hero instead of a criminal. I asked my dad, who was retired by that point, how much trouble he thinks Karen would have gotten in and he told me that pretending to be a police officer was a pretty serious crime and the length that she went to in her fraud was a lot. She didn't say it once but instead constructed this whole thing that went on for a long time. They were not gonna have any sympathy for her due to how premediated the entire thing was. Not to mention getting the illegal signs installed to get cars towed that she didn't want there. Pretending to be police and making up your own laws is gonna end up with somebody either going to jail or going broke to stay out of jail. I think with Karen she ended up going to jail because I never did see her after she got arrested. I'm sure the golf cart got taken away from her but even then I never spotted her around again. Her house got sold a few months later too and then a few months after that I moved away. I heard from a neighbor that she apparently told the judge that he did not know what he was talking about and that she was a higher ranking judge than him. That might have been just a story but after pretending to be a cop I would not be shocked at her pretending to be a judge as well. I'm sure all the other women in jail are gonna love her personality. And yeah guys I gotta say as much as I enjoyed the ending of the story and Karen exactly getting what she deserved, it kind of feels that Karen clearly has mental issues and I do hope that she gets the help that she needs. Either way, if you enjoyed the story please don't forget to like the video and post some star emojis in the comments if you wish to support me. Thank you so much in advance. The next one is titled Idiot Stole My Property. This is pretty basic revenge but I think it's funny enough to share. Porch piracy has been horrible in my neighborhood lately. Basically, if you are not home to immediately claim your package, it will be stolen. Nothing is really being done about it by the police despite there being a lot of proof from various home security cameras so then I took matters into my own hands. I don't have the time or skill to make one of those complex glitter bombs or anything but I wanted to send a message to these people somehow. So my solution? I filled a water bottle with pee, tightly packed it into the box so it won't move and lightly taped the cap on instead of twisting it. That way, as soon as the box is opened, the cap comes off and piss spills everywhere. It is stupid but effective. What are the thieves gonna do about it? Tell the police they stole a package that had pee in it? And basically I started doing this earlier this week and after the first two got stolen I'm now able to leave one of these traps front and center on the porch all day without it being stolen. And yeah ripe stars if you ever had to deal with any package thieves please let us know in the comments and personally for me since I am from western Europe we don't really get packages stolen that much the only time of the year this would really occur at least where I am from is during Christmas time where you have to be very careful with packages. One time I even wanted to send something from Thailand and my mom basically told me to not send it during the Christmas time because there is a high chance that it will get lost or stolen or whatever so I should rather send it in January or February. Sad reality I guess. Anyway the next one is titled Epic Revenge. So this story happened over 20 years ago during the late 90s. I was 17 and had just recently gotten a job as a dishwasher at a local summer camp. This was a large camp that was run by a corporation. I won't say the name of the corporation but there is a very famous song named after them. I had been to this summer camp before as a kid so I knew the layout of the camp. My job started on the first week of summer, mid-June, so the kids were already there. 
I had my interview with the acting kitchen manager who we will call Susan. The original manager had just recently left the company and put Susan in charge. This did not seem to bother Susan as she was eyeing for the kitchen manager job that had recently opened. Susan herself was a sweetheart since she was nice and helped me out with everything. I also interviewed with Bob, the camp director, as Susan did not have any hiring or firing power as she was just an acting manager. The majority of the kitchen staff were also nice and helpful, I made friends with them during the time I worked there. So while there was way more than these people, I remember there being around 10 to 15 kitchen staff members during the summer, I'm only gonna bring up ones that are important to this story. There was Todd, an older guy who lived only a few blocks from the camp and did not have a car, so he rode his bike in the morning, who was also a dishwasher, he basically was my supervisor but also really nice. Then there was Dale, the head cook, had been there for a long time and used to be a cook for the middle school. Debbie, another cook, Ellie, a kitchen server, later girlfriend, and Boris, a Russian dishwasher who had a sponsorship with the camp as part of their Worldview program. There were three other dishwashers, Dumb, Dumber and Dumbest, who I will call the dummies, but they are not part of the revenge, just that they were three dishwashers that were the worst. Nobody got along with them and they could not get fired because Susan was the acting manager. Now, due to the fact that we were located in a camp, the staff had full access to the facilities of the camp. This means that during my breaks or off work, if the camp was open, I was allowed to go to the swimming pool, go horseback riding or even boating. As long as I did not get in the way of the kids who had a set schedule, it was full access. Susan told me this along with the director of the camp Bob during my interview and Bob was also a nice man but also kind of weird. This is important later on. During the summer this place was wonderful. I would typically start working the lunch shift and then have an hour lunch break between lunch and dinner. While I was required by state law for a half hour lunch, Susan gave me an hour which she did for everyone. Typically, during this hour, I would go swimming or play with the horses and one time Bob and I went jet boating around the lake or Ellie and I would make out in the pool. Honestly, just typical stuff a teenage boy would do. Most everyone in the kitchen staff loved me as I was a model employee and helped with just about everything. They loved that they had someone who they could help with as the dummies would always mess up. In August we got the news. So basically the corporation had picked a new kitchen manager and it was someone from outside of the company. Susan was really upset, she had worked so hard for years for this job and the higher ups picked someone outside of the company. The new manager was named Karen. The first time we met Karen, she gave a speech of how new changes are coming and we will now work as a team and was condescending at Susan's work. The first thing she did was do a massive cleanup to the large walk-in fridges. The strange thing was that she didn't have the staff to do it but it was, later on we found out, her family cleaning it out. She also hired her husband, Dan, to be the assistant manager, pretty much forcing Susan out. During this time the camp was starting to transition from a summer camp to an event camp. So the large staff would be cut in half. This was not a problem normally as people would be leaving for school or other seasonal jobs that start opening up. The first people she cut were the dummies. Everyone was happy on that and that was the only good thing she did but in the end all that was left was Ellie, Dale, Todd, Debbie, Boris and a few others and me. I asked Karen if I could work the weekend as I had high school and she agreed since everyone else had wanted to keep me on staff. Karen then begins her terror and it only took a week but it happened. Her fangs started to show and the power got to her, each person felt the wrath of her. She was one of those people who think their farts don't smell. She would come in late, leave early but yell at everyone for doing the same thing. Everyone had problems with her but here are a few that I remember. So Todd was starting to get written warnings about coming in late, Karen placed him on the morning shift but he told her that he could not do the morning shift or else he would be late as he doesn't have a car and bikes to work. The thing is, the camp is located in a rural area, it does not have street lights and biking in the morning is dangerous. This is not a problem during the summer as the sun is up earlier but during the fall and winter it's not acceptable. She called him lazy for not having a car and it didn't matter, she needed him in here. Dale, the head cook, was starting to get fed up with Karen, ordering too little of the food and the wrong food as well. Having cheaper products and being forced to work with a broken stove. One time he asked her when the stove would be fixed and her response was, fix it yourself, you're a big boy. So anyway, oftentimes we would run out of food for the night and had to make sandwiches for the people. Ellie got the worst of it. 
Since we were dating, I found out that she had an eating disorder earlier and she was two years older than me and she used to be anorexic. Karen kept calling her piggy and fat and how she wouldn't eat all the food in the kitchen. She was upset and crying the whole time when this happened. I confronted Karen about it and she said she shouldn't be a sheltered college brat and should just grow up. And if she has a problem, she should talk to me, not you. I also felt the wrath of her, she would change my schedule around randomly after posting it. On Friday we would get our schedules for the week and I typically worked Friday night, Saturday and Sunday because of high school. And well, during the week she would change my schedule, so I was working on Friday night, she then changed it to Wednesday night and then would call saying I missed Wednesday night. Unluckily for her, Dale had my number and called me whenever he found a schedule change but it was getting old quickly. She would also tell me to do a job and then change what to do. For example, one time she told me to clean the oven, when I was near finishing up on the job she asks why I did not clean the stove and then get mad when I said she told me to do the oven. Another example was that she would tell me to mop the floor and Boris would come over and help me out because he had nothing to do and then get on me for Boris finishing my job. Even though Boris spoke up and said that he asked her if he could help me and she said yes. Another example was that she cut my break from an hour to half hour and not allowing me to use the facilities during my break since I was only on break to eat and not to play. After a few weeks of this, late September, I went to Bob about her and told him everything about what she was doing to us. I found out from Bob that Dale also went to him earlier that week with the same thing. However, having the spine of a jellyfish, he said, I will talk with Karen. And then, a day later, Karen starts getting on us for going to Bob and not her saying, if you have a problem with me, you come to me, not Bob. That was the last straw for us, so I talked with the rest of the kitchen staff and we decided that she needed to leave. During one of my breaks that she was not in the office that day when we were still trying to think of a way to get rid of her, I was eating my dinner in her office. The manager's office was the only one with AC in it and it was a hot day. The thing is, we all had permission to be in her office as it had the keys to the large fridge, tools, the private dress room and whatnot. So I'm eating dinner with Ellie when Boris comes looking for a pen. He was trying to fill out information so he could go home to Russia. I don't remember what, just that he was planning on leaving in three weeks and then sits down at her desk. He is opening up the desk to find a black pen when he finds a check. It was a paycheck to one of the dummies who left a month early. It was his final paycheck, highly illegal to withhold a paycheck. Boris showed us the paycheck and then he started to look at the computer that was on her desk. While Karen was a jerk, she was also stupid and left everything unlocked. And there he saw the orders. Basically, she was ordering things that we never got into the kitchen or ordering extra stuff. It turns out that she was ordering more food than we thought, stealing the food and using it for her own personal use. I told Boris that he was looking through her personal files and he said, what are they gonna do, deport me? We also found out that Bob was getting a kickback from the extra food that Karen was getting in to keep quiet. So it explained why Bob had the spine of a jellyfish towards Karen. Boris printed out the information and held onto it. This is important later on, the three of us told Dale about it and he wanted to confront Karen but Debbie pointed out that she would just deny it and Bob would cover up. We thought about corporate but we had no connections to corporate and Susan had left the company who used to have the connections. It then hit on us in about three weeks, mid-October, corporate was gonna be having a retreat using the camp. All the bigwigs and high ups were gonna be there and we were all scheduled to be at work that day because there was gonna be a huge feast for dinner while lunch corporate was gonna have grilled burgers and hot dogs. I remember that corporate brought in an outside vendor for the grilled stuff since they were preparing a big feast. Karen was gonna be there as well to impress the bigwigs. We decided to act on that day but also knew what to do beforehand. It was gonna be Boris' last day as he was leaving to Russia that night so on the day of the feast all of us show up on time at around noon. The dinner feast was not gonna be until 5pm so we had plenty of time to prepare or at least that is what Karen thought. We got there and just sat around around the kitchen and did no work. We locked the freezer with a different lock, it was only locked with a normal deadbolt lock you can get at the hardware store. The janitor was not gonna be in until later in the evening, thanks to Dale telling him about the plan and not to answer the phone, so he could not use his tools to break into the fridge. So we waited. Karen did not get in until 4pm with her husband, she looked as if she was ready for a major interview when she saw all of us just standing around. 
The stove was not on and cold, the fridge was locked and we were just sitting around. Karen started to yell and talk about how today is important for her and that she would have our heads for this. So then Dale comes up to her and says, we quit. Karen went full on deer in headlights and her mouth was so wide open that you could throw peanuts into it. All of us walked out on her, into our cars and drove away before she could get a word in. We decided to just quit. After we quit, all of us started to look for jobs and while some of us had security lined up since we knew that this was gonna happen, but knew that a major shakeup like this would grab the attention of the bigwigs. I found out a month later when I got a call from Susan, the original acting manager before Karen, asking me if I wanted my old job back. It turns out that Karen called Bob and said her whole kitchen staff just left and they needed to tell the bigwigs that the feast was gonna be cancelled. She could not get into the fridge with all the food since her key did not work and nobody was picking up to help her. She tried to call others that left or were fired but since she was so toxic nobody wanted to work with her anymore. Of course the bigwigs were not happy, they went right to the kitchen to find out what was wrong and saw that nobody but Bob, Karen and Dan were there without any food cooking. Boris walks in and Karen starts yelling at him saying how he could do this to her. Boris then hands the bigwigs the printed info he got from Karen's computer earlier and had made copies of it, gave it to everyone in the room. Boris told me through email that he wasn't sure who was in charge so he gave everyone in the room the info since he figured one of them had to be the head guy and then got into a taxi and went back to Russia. Corporate started an investigation as soon as that happened. Bob, Karen and Dan were fired almost right on the spot and not only did they find out about the withholding checks and backdoor deals with Bob but Bob also was stealing money from the camp to support his drug habit. In the end, Karen and Bob were arrested for fraud and most likely other things, it's been over 20 years, I don't remember everything, but that one stuck out at me. So pretty much the whole camp had a shake up, Susan took over as the manager, got the job she wanted with a pay raise, but she did leave after they gave the job to Karen but her new job was not working out. And then also about half of the staff came back. I did come back too, during the two months I was out of the work my parents were helping me out with bills. They forced me to pay for my own car insurance and gas. And in addition my grades were never the best in high school while this was happening. So then I came back but only for a month since by that point it was in the middle of winter and it was costing me more in gas to get to work than work was paying me. Then Dale came back to the job along with Debbie but Ellie and I broke up. It was summer love anyway. As she moved away for college Todd never came back and works now at a local liquor store. At least last I saw him. I have not been in that store in about 7 years years. So what happened now in my current job that caused me to remember this? Well I got a call from Dan about a month ago recently wanting to do some work for him. However he lived in another state that we are not licensed to do work in and that was pretty much the end of the conversation. I decided to google search her name but did not find much info except some court records about the original case from years ago. Dan and Karen don't appear to have any social media page or anything that I can find. I honestly don't care anymore as it has been over 20 years since this happened and I'm much happier at my current job. And yeah guys that is the end of this XXL story and I gotta say it was a very interesting story because I love these stories about employees working together to get revenge on the higher ups and corrupt awful managers. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content then please don't forget to check out my endless playlist which has thousands of videos and hours and hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much and I will see you again tomorrow.